we have successfully predicted all the words and as you can see i have just passed pirates and else all it has done on its own so you can see i pass cloudy and it has predicted cloudy with a chance of meatballs which is absolutely correct movie name now i will pass harry and it has predicted harry potter and the goblet of fire which is very much correct <laughs> The basic intuition of the next word predictors are is that they have to predict the next possible word from a continuous sentence. If I give you a word like linear and then say to predict the next word, you will possibly guess regression or function. But there can be many. But then things get a little trickier when there is word like just how. After how there can be many possible sentences but we want the recommendation to be suited for our purpose if you are making a developer site you want to give recommendation like how to make chatbot how to make a blog website like that if it is a recipe website you want it to be like how to make a burger you got the idea it is case specific so this recommendation of next word totally depends on your data which you give for training in this video i will be making next word predictor for a movie website for that i have taken data set from year which contains 5000 movie names and their related information so you can download it i have already downloaded the data set then we have to open this csv in all columns we want this original title column which is our column of interest so let's make a new directory and open the jupyter notebook so now i will import pandas tensorflow and numpy now we will call our csv file and make pandas data frame out of it Then from all the columns we will only keep our original title column. See now we only have that column. But for training we have to convert this text data into numbers. For that we will first convert this column from pandas object into a list type. We will use TensorFlow's tokenizer. What it does is map each word with some number. If we have a sentence like "What are you doing?" and if we tokenize it with tokenizer, it will map every word with some unique number as shown here. So after tokenization, our text now looks like this. To see which word is mapped to which number, you can run tokenizer dot word index, which will return a dictionary showing it. But to train, we want input and output values. But as of now, we only have this one single list that contains all the data. For making input and output values, we will take every single list. For convenience, I am just showing it in text form here. So what I was saying was, we will take every single list and first we will cut out all the words except the first word. And in output, it will contain the word which is consecutive to that word. Then we will take first two words, and in the output, there is the word which is consecutive to both these words. And we will do the same for every one. So let's code it. I have made two empty list of name x and y. X will contain all the input data and Y contain all the output data. Then we will make a for loop which will iterate over every element of our sequence list. If you remember, sequence list is a list of list, meaning when we will iterate, our I will contain a list. Then we can do that operation as we discussed in the animation. Then I am running one more for loop, and this time I have made a variable name index which contains values from one to length of the list i. Then we will append all the elements till that index value in the list x. For example, if the index value is two, then all the element till two will go to the list x, and then I will append the value which is 
add that index in list y. In our example, the value at 2 is 1. That's why it will go in the list y. Then this will repeat for every index till the second last element in that list. Then I will ensure that the list that contains only one word will be dropped. Meaning it will not be used for training as we are making a next word predictor. So a list with only one word does not suit our purpose. Let's run it. Pretty quick. So now we have prepared our input and output values which we can use for training. Let's print the first 10 values of x. It has done the exact same thing as I showed in the animation. Only thing is in animation I have showed the same in text form and here it is in the number form. Let's also print the y values. In y there is only one one element that correspond to the next word from the x list. I know it's a bit confusing to digest it in the first time that's why I will recommend you to code it simultaneously to actually understand what it is doing. Let's resume. But still our data is not perfect for training. As you can see the length of the list is varying. For that we have to pad our sequences. We can easily do it with Keras. If you don't know what pad sequences do then you can see this code from TensorFlow documentation. It contains varying amount of list. After padding Keras has added zeros in every list to make its length similar with everyone's. Let's do the same in our case. So after padding Keras has automatically made it a numpy array. After printing the shape you can see it contains 8483 rows and 14 columns which is a uniform length array. We have to do some pre-processing for y2 which is to one hot encode them. After printing the shape of Y, we can see it has 8483 rows which are similar but here columns are 5045. Let me show you the reason why it contains 5045 columns. For that I will make a variable named vocab size which contains the length of our vocabulary dictionary. If I print it, it will be 5045 which is the total amount of words known by our model. Now our data is training ready and it's time to train our model. Let's make the model architecture. For that first layer is an embedding layer. I hope you all are familiar with it as it is a topic on its own. After that I will add two LSTM layer each of 100 units. After that I will add a dense layer with the same 100 neurons and at the last there is an output layer which has neurons equal to the number of words which is in our vocab size. And that's it. After that we will compile our model with optimizer Adam and loss equal to categorical cross entropy and accuracy as our metrics. Let's fit the model with our x and y values. First for just to see everything is going right I will keep epochs to 10. So it is running and using my GPU too. So now I will break the execution and run it again with 100 epochs and leave it running. So after the first 100 epochs our accuracy is near to 25% which is not good at all. As you can see our model is learning very slowly. So if we go and check the learning rate of Adam it is 0.001. So we have to increase it so our learning process speeds up. After some trial and error I got 0.04 as an ok ok learning rate for training. Let's run it for 100 epochs. 
After training on 100 epochs with a learning rate 0.004, it has done a quite good than 0.01 learning rate. Uh, our accuracy is 55.5%, but still it isn't good. That's why I will run it for more 100 epochs. If you know Kera starts training from where it left off, this is the reason our accuracy is near to where our previous training ended. After this 100 epochs, our accuracy is around 63%, which is good, but we can still do better. For that, I will run this again for 150 epochs, which is the last time. Now after more than 150 epochs, our accuracy is just wandering around 65%, which is okay as our data contains some noise too. Let's save our model first, so we can use it afterwards. Let's do the testing now. For that, I will make a function that will take text as input and end words, which is still how many sentences you have to predict the next word. For that, we will run a for loop that many times. Now it's time to do the same pre-processing as we did on our data. Now we will do the prediction by model.predict. This will return an array of probabilities. Therefore, by doing np.argmax, we will get the index of the highest probability. After then, we will take that argmax value and convert it into text. I am doing minus 1 cause if you remember, our dictionary starts from number 1. Minus will take care of that. Then I will add that predicted text to the text view patch. So when the for loop is run again, it will make prediction on the up updated text variable. So let's run our final build. And voila, we have successfully predicted all the words. And as you can see, I have just passed pirates and else all it has done on its own. So you can see I passed Cloudy and it has predicted Cloudy with a chance of meatballs, which is absolutely correct movie name. Now I will pass Harry and it has predicted Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is very much correct. So despite having 65% accuracy, it is able to predict next word quite wisely. So you can take advantage of it and deploy it it on your site with tensorflow.js you can get this notebook from the github link below thanks for watching